Hello and welcome to the CXO Show, the podcast for C-suite sales and marketing leaders. I'm Joe Birkdale, founder and CEO of Project 36, the strategic marketing agency behind the CXO Show. And in today's episode, we're looking at managing super remote teams in what is now a lockdown world. As business leaders, we're all having to very quickly transition from one reality to the next. And in as little as three months, we've gone from business as usual to having to adapt travel bans, voluntary isolation, super remote working, and now in the UK and in a growing number of other countries, a near complete lockdown. So how, how do we manage our now super remote teams? What are the problems they're going to come across? And how best do we manage our teams in a lockdown world? To discuss this, I have with me my special guest speaker and former agency owner, who's now gone client-side, a senior director at EMEA Marketing for global technology company Altair. So Evelyn Gebhardt, welcome to the CXO Show. Thank you very much, Joe. I'm really happy to be on the show with you today and to share my experience about the work uh, about working with remote teams. Um, I think this is really a very important um, topic in general, but in these times especially. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think I've, I can re- remember in the last sort of twenty odd years such a transition so quickly with the working world. Obviously, with the internet and remote right, networking software and Zoom and things like that, these things come on in dribs and drabs everybody's been forced onto this kind of working world um, almost overnight. So Evelyn, like pretty much everyone listening to this podcast, you're working remotely today, I'm working remotely. Can you explain a little bit about Altair? But before that, uh, what's your current setup at home? What's your home office setup? So Joe, um, I've been actually working from home a lot longer than many other people in the current situation. Um, when I started to work from home last year in October, when I that was when I um, changed uh, my job and joined Altair, I left the office environment of my agency and set up my home office. Um, now I'm having a very nice workspace set up in our living room area with all that I need, including a very good internet connection to start with, um, but also yeah. with a great view of Marburg, the town I, in Germany I live in, when I look out of the window um, in front of my desk, so I can see the hills across the valley and um, the houses. And so th- I think this is also very important that you really create an um, environment for yourself that is comf- comfortable and um, working. And um, the reason I am working from home is twofolded. Altair doesn't have any local office um, very close to my location. Um, but um, the more important reason is that my team is distributed all over EMEA and it really doesn't matter where I stay because um, in order to meet with my team, we all have to get together in one place or I have to visit them, they have to visit me or we have to um, yeah, use the means of modern communication to get together. Regarding Altair, to give the audience some background on the company I'm working for, Altair is a leading provider of enterprise class engineering software. That's great. Thank you. Now, as I understand it, Evelyn, your role in EMEA as marketing director for Altair, you're managing a typical remote team. And by that, I mean that those members each work in a local or or, or a regional office around EMEA and then you oversee them. So how do you, well, or rather, how did you manage that remote team? And and what problems have you had to, to, to learn and to adapt and to overcome? rather than having people sat in an office with you? Yeah, my, my team is located all over EMEA. They're, they're from Turin to Lund in Sweden, from Israel to Madrid. And obviously we have um, some team members in Germany, France and the UK and in other EMEA regions. Um, one team member is even located in Stellenbosch in South Africa. So you can really call that a remote team. I think the um, problems that we had to overcome were probably um, how to communicate in a um, consistent way and how to make sure that everybody feels um, really part of a team instead of having um, different silos in all of the um, countries and areas um, they are working in. Mm. So most of our communication is obviously handled via the internet, we have email, chat and web meetings. Um, but before the current situation, I would also go and visit my team members um, in their offices. Um, 
we arranged meetings um, for all of them to attend. Um, for example, last time in December, um, I had all of my team members and even the extended team of the Global Altair Marketing Organization here in Marburg in December. It's important to really keep up the spirit um, uh, and to um, do some team building events um, to really grow that team. And um, I really have to admit that um, it really helps to meet people in person sometimes and your team member in person in times. If you can um, not have that, um, you have to find other means and ways to really create that um, team feeling. Absolutely. I mean, as you know, going back to the cavemen, we're all tribal uh, social creatures. We like to get together. So. Yeah. Being in that, in that same environment um, is really important. It fosters a relationship and it's the intangible communication. It's the, it's the hand movements. It's where we look. It's the smiles. Technology is an enabler now, um, but you can't beat the physical presence of, of being in a room with somebody. Yeah. So totally understand the need to set up those uh, physical, physical meetups as and when you can. For those that have managed remote teams before, um, Managing supporting that workforce has always had its challenge. We've got the global economy, we've got global teams, time zones, of course, cultures, um, even languages to grapple with, um, most things. But now sales and marketing leaders are having to wrestle with super remote working. And this is your teams are not in a single location. They're at home. They're having to juggle first of all their worries, their, their home wor worries and their health worries about this new uh, this virus, but also the workloads. They've got to get on top of the technology. They may not have had to ever set up uh, their home before to, to have stable um, streaming of their broadband. And of course, they've got their families in the background running around. And sadly, for all too many, there's going to be the health. Some of the members of the family, either direct or indirect, uh, are likely to, to come down with this virus. So how are you finding this, Evelyn, you know, this shift to super remote? So rather than having one call with a team of people in one room, you've now got 10 calls. And how are your teams responding? Yeah, well, it is um, a little bit of a challenge um, to work with that new kind of situation. But um, on the other hand, um, we are really lucky um, while working for Altair because Altair has a culture that has always supported remote working. And um, it was a little bit easier probably even for the team members to adapt to the new situation and um, get used to more FaceTime and um, internet chats than um, meeting with um, their team members and with um, the other team members of the EMEA marketing team remotely. Um, it is... Um, difficult for some of them. They have to judge, uh, juggle their times um, a little bit better. Obviously, as you said, mm. there are families um, also working from home now, um, partners working from home. There might only be one office space for everybody. Um, you have to um, homeschool kids um, and you have really have to juggle that. But Altair has been very supportive in creating an environment that um, enables people to do that um, in addition to um, obviously making sure that everybody has the remote um, access to all of the um, company systems. It has also been um, very good um, in giving the employees um, more flexible times. So sometimes maybe they start working very early in the morning um, before the kids are up or before the other, before the partner is already um, starting to work and needing the workspace as well, um, or they're working a little bit later than they usually would. So um, that has been a big help. Yeah, and I think you touched on a really important point there, um, culture. So technology, yes, it's an enabler. And as long as you're not banging in holes in pieces of metal and need to be in a physical factory, for the vast majority of us to work in a service organization, whether it be software, whether it be advice and guidance and consultancy, um, design and things like that, they can be physically done remotely. So that shift isn't so, isn't so much the issue. It's uh, We find it's the culture. If you, if you hire for a culture of remote working, then there's an understanding, there's a trust level, there's that way of life, there's that mentality and understanding of how to go about it. For others, it's very 
very difficult if you're transitioning to be a remote worker. You may have had 10, 20, 30 years, even more sometimes, of a morning routine of get up, breakfast, get dressed, suited, booted, the morning commute, arrive at the office, socialize. To take that away, that can be very difficult for people. You say that your team's obviously been enabled because the technology provides that and a culture there. But how has your role had to evolve since that outbreak? And then you're now experiencing different issues with your super remote team as you did with your previous remote team. I think I'm, I'm putting more time into personal contacts with all of my team members, both as a group and individually. And um, since we're meeting less um, or not anymore in person for the time being, um, it is really important um, to set up part sometimes and to also create the social atmosphere of a team so what um, several teams at Altair have started um, to do is to create um, virtual coffee breaks so we would have some FaceTime um, even not discussing uh, business topics but discussing personal things just chatting having a coffee together and really taking a break away from the um, from from the routine to at least virtually create this feeling of um, you're not alone, um, you're a part of a team. Yeah, and, and that's it. Remote working uh, is known to have uh, negative uh, mental health effects because people, as I said before, we're social, social creatures. So remote working can actually feel very uh, isolating. Definitely, and we are um, really working on establishing channels um, to make sure nobody feels like they're left alone at home. As I mentioned, um, we are having this um, virtual coffee breaks within the teams. Also, our um, executive management um, has reached out regularly, providing um, information and providing the environment to really interact um, virtually. For example, we are using Teams a lot, um, mm -hmm. and within those Teams, we have created channels um, where people can post what they're currently doing, post videos, photos, photos of their work environment, so we can picture each other sitting at our desks and know yeah. a little bit more about the situation everybody is in. What I saw on the old uh, LinkedIn feed today, um, somebody was talking about their morning commute from coffee machine to desk was about 10 steps. And yeah. it's a nice human touch. Um, and it's those small details that it's where, you know, it, it, it's, it's being human. It's being open. And if you show openness and vulnerability and we're all in this together, right? And that's what makes this super remote working a little bit easier. This is a global issue. So it's not like the UK is on lockdown and everybody else is getting on with things as normal. And therefore the rest of the world's kind of unsure or aware what's going on and a little bit dubious. This is global. So everybody's in the same boat. So, by saying, yeah, not ideal, but I'm going to take 10 steps from the coffee machine to the kitchen table where I'm working and right next to me is my kid doing his homework and opposite me is my wife doing her work and in the background is the dog and the delivery driver ringing the bell. That happens. I watched a fantastic webinar yesterday about presentation skills, about how important it is if you're doing virtual calls to have your cameras on. So uh, he was saying that's an obvious one, you know, you physically see each other. But what he said a lot of people don't do, they don't look at the camera, they're looking at themselves on screen. So look at the camera, look straight down the lens because it's that human touch. It's that virtual being in, in present, looking at each other, picking up on body language um, that makes it that much more human. So those little touches, as you said, they're, they're great. And there's obviously, there's a whole separate podcast we could do on the technology that's out there to help. You know, you've got Slack, Microsoft Teams, uh, Zoom, all these ways of uh, communicating and, and keeping groups together. And, and I've noticed that with my team. <clears throat> We're always virtual um, anyway, but we have Slack channels, which have got um, almost exactly the same as we call it the coffee room. And that's where you post your funny jokes and things, things you've heard said. Then you've got the various different breakout rooms within that to discuss work stuff and it's this understanding of what's going on and I communicate uh, projections for where we're going as a business. So everybody's got visibility. And, and that's one of the things that I would say is keeping your team fully informed. Mastering the technologies is, is one as a manager is really important so that you can help. 
but giving them tidbits of information. This is a massive period of insecurity. If you know that uh, payroll is going to be late, for example, that's something that you need to communicate through. Um, give them extra bits of information. You've heard this on the grapevine, that on the grapevine, you're doing your best. That creates reassurance. It, it helps position you as that leader. It helps them, uh, your teams, follow you and understand that you're on their side, which, yeah. which in turn helps them do the work for you. And absolutely, I um, totally agree with that. I think transparency is very important, not only in times like these, but um, in general. And um, what you mentioned about the FaceTime or actually using your video, I have noticed that a lot more people are using video now if the bandwidth allows for that, obviously. But um, um, while previously our meetings were more um, just audio, Uh, meetings. Um, now more and more people um, join the meeting with their web camera cams on and um, really giving the opportunity to look into the space and area um, your colleague is working in and um, has to deal with. Yeah, exactly. And it's that understanding. If they, we've all had the, uh, the working from home, either call or meeting where all of a sudden there's a dog barking or the doorbell going three, four months ago. That was, that was like, Oh no, it's horrific. Sorry. I'm really sorry. The dog barks. Now it's, it's, it's what an upmanship. Everybody's trying to outdo each other with the worst catastrophe possible. Um, <laughs> you know, we, we've all seen in the UK, uh, I can't remember who it was, but the MP where his, uh, his two children came running in whilst he was live on air to the BBC. And then his poor wife comes crawling in on her hands and knees, desperately <laughs> trying to drag them back out again. But, The camera picked it all up and he was live. These things happen. It's great. And they make us more human and more approachable too. Exactly. Exactly. The barriers come down and, and that's exactly it. It's the barriers that we've got with technology. You can actually get around a large proportion of that uh, by being open and being human. And yeah. So in every episode of the CX show, Evelyn, we, we ask our guests to give us three, four, five, maybe top tips, you know, some takeaway piece of info that, other sales and marketing leaders can then think about, adapt and possibly adopt into their own specific uh, work scenario. So with that in mind, have you got any tips for managing a super remote workforce? Yeah, I think my, my first tip would probably be that you really have to be flexible with the time of your team members. But at the same time, also to make sure that you stay in close contact and that you reach out, that you're approachable. Um, another tip might be um, to make enough time um, for one-on-one -on -one communication with each of your team members um, and if possible meet with each team member at least once a year in person. Currently, obviously that is not um, possible. So um, for my team, I made sure that I have more one-on-one -on -one communication with each of the team member and uh, members and then also um, bringing them all together on a regularly base. You have to um, create an enabling workflows and um, support the collaboration within your team, make each team member feel like they're a part of the team um, and they can approach all of their colleagues, um, not only me as a leader, but also um, the other colleagues learn from each other and communicate a lot more and better, grow together as a team. Then um, another thing that is really important, I think, is to respect cultural differences um, while um, at the same time finding common grounds for the entire team, especially with an extreme remote team like um, the one uh, I'm working with. It is um, important to understand and to listen and to understand the cultural differences, even if we're close in, in um, Europe or in EMEA, um, there are some um, differences in, in culture and how people um, behave and react and also how they realize their own um, environment. And um, last but not least, I think it is really important to take and to give regular feedback um, and to create a transparent work environment. I think I can echo every single one of those um, and intertwining all of those tips. I think you've got technology, use it, make, make sure your team are happy using it, but nothing beats either a phone call or, or a, a virtual video meeting just to say, hi, how are you doing? Um, I think that 
really lets people get things off their chest, gets the, get, lets them get worries out. Um, little things become big things if they're not dealt with. Um, so that's really good advice there. Okay, so there you have it. Evelyn's top tips on how you can manage a super remote team in today's strange economic climate. And that brings us to the close of today's podcast. A huge, huge thank you to my guest, Evelyn Gebhard from Altair for freeing up her time uh, to support the CXO show and our listeners. Thank you, Joe. It has been a big pleasure. Remember to check back for the next episode and subscribe to the podcast via your favorite podcast app. We're on Spotify, Apple, Google, TuneIn, and many, many others. And you can also check us out online at thecxo.show where you'll see a schedule of upcoming episodes, guest speakers, recordings of previous episodes, and you can even submit your suggestions for topics to be covered. So head to thecxo.show to find out more. The CXO Show is recorded, produced, and managed by Project 36. And what you might not know is that a video companion of this podcast will also be available. Built and produced with our video and webinar partners at 23.net, the video of this episode features closed caption subtitles, so you can read along without needing speakers or headphones, and it also features extra information, like links to resources and other content assets mentioned in the episode. The video is available now, so please check it out at thecxo.show. Until next time, Evelyn, thank you very much. Goodbye, and thanks for tuning in. Mm-hmm.